All right, and I am back. And let's see if we can get recycled goods. All right, here we go. Chat bands are done. Huh? I got them written down as well. Yes, I do. Good shout, good shout. So we have chat bands are Ergot, Kazix, Jax, and Lulu. We saw Ergot doing a lot of work with Magic Melkor there. Unfortunately, uh, Point Defense did uh, lose that match, but still, Ergot was integral into a lot of the huge fights that we saw uh, throughout the jungle with his grenade there. And he was playing his first game as well. He packs a lot of poke and can bring someone from a comfortable position to a very, very dangerous position in the middle of a team. We've got Kazik Fan, very mobile, quite high damage. Jack's Fan scales into late game like no other. I'm fairly confident I've seen Jax's 1v3 in teams at end game. Because he's just that kind of guy. Incredibly. And we have Yulu Ban. Just generally in our support. We have Wukong, Cassadin, Darius, Jace, Cedril Ban thus far as well. Um, Wukong, high team fight utility, good ultimate for a team fight. Knock up and quite a bit of damage attached. We have Cassadin, very high mobility. Very high crowd control in his silence and his slow. Quite a lot of damage whilst building tanky. Generally, Deemed to be a his own tier with Jace of Champions on Dominion. Cheesecake in itself. We've got a Darius Burn, very high damage, even with tanky items. True damage is his ultimate. Jace Burn, ridiculous scaling, good disengage, good poke, generally all around broken. Ezreal Burn, high poke, high mobility, good carry in general, can stop a cat from across the map, and a Moo Burn. AoE, AoE stun, snare finger, his ultimate. Quite a few stuns, late game with some CDR, just generally a nuisance, quite high damage tank. We have a team I picked up straight away from Infeed on the left hand side. He wasn't banned this game. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, we'll, see we of, have, we'll see a lot we of map control from tonight. Timo there. Um, we do have a Nunu pick, probably for uh, Necrogen there, and Saber Z on Vayne, although that is a very strong composition top with the Blood Boil on top of Silver Bolts there. Captain Blueberry showing Annie again. Maybe he wants to pick it this time. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Painkiller will probably pick up. Um, we'll see another Malphite pick. Most likely, especially Malphite against the again, again. Yeah, you don't want an attack speed dead carry getting free attacks. And this looks set to be Painkiller on Malphite again. Very, very strong tank. Good initiation. Quite, well, very tanky. W grants additional ammo. Q's a slow and a speed to himself to ease an AoE attack speed reduction. Start that with a frozen heart, and people people won't be happy. People won't be happy indeed. Captain Booberry opting for Kale instead. We've seen Captain Booberry sport Kale several times, particularly with that uh, the invulnerable ult can be a clutch in uh, save or engage, preventing a lot of damage uh, from you know Nunu full channel Nunu ult or even Silver Bolt procking. Just in general, all around utility on Kale, as well as incredible amounts of damage. With yeah, the indeed. Her ultimate, Kale can actually out other carries with a re up and her ultimate. She can kill off other carries incredibly quickly with that extra moment of invulnerability, usually meaning escape as well. Very potent pick. We've got a Poppy pick again, but it's like, oh, they've denied Vayne and Poppy this game. Two picks that they're against. Mm -hmm. And we have a Javan pick. We haven't seen it, one of those in the finals thus far. Son, Let's see if this is locked in. Son, known for his Jax, also known for his Jarvan. We'll probably see, uh, maybe we'll actually see Jarvan bot lane. Very interesting. We see a lot of Jarvan top in EU. He's a very, very common pick. Holds quite a lot of crowd control. His ultimate can keep tanky locked down indefinitely. Quite useful against Teemo and Kale, preventing their escape. And he's quite tanky as well. Although it can have. It can work quite badly with Poppy's charge, actually. I know that people can be charged out, knocked out of Jav's ultimate. It doesn't quite work as it should do with similar things. Got to see what two picks come out of either Rice and Comfortari. So, Rise again, potentially. The Lulu, Lulu. Soul oh. pick. Yeah, she was in the pre. She was in the chat bands pre-game. That's what those are in the middle of the middle of the screen on the notepad document. See what he switches to for the um, probably Confiterius on uh, Pantheon there. 
very interesting pick. Uh, we saw it play very well against Poppy and Vane there. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe commentators can do the same as Sauron, although it did not lead Sauron to victory there, unfortunately. Uh, did lead to a loss, but it was a good performance, and he did manage to close the gap and shut down the carries quite a bit early to move the game. The problem with Pantheon is he struggles late game against carries. Vane in particular, she can condemn him during his stun with a gap closer, which means Vane is still stunned, but gets a moment to try and escape. Creates a gap between herself and Pantheon. And now the final pick will be up for Necrogen. We'll have to see what's picked, be it Diana Bart, which looks like it will be a new new Vane top plane in this case. Very interesting, as Diana actually beats a lot of the enemy champions on Pace of Villain's Child Support. I played the Diana Rise and the Diana Kale matchup, and it's usually an easy win. Indeed, once she gets to six, she can close a gap and punish people incredibly hard. Yeah. And she's quite durable for Dex as well, especially with a slow. Indeed, and the refreshing shield is also incredibly powerful, not to mention it dishes out a lot of damage with the low right, cooldowns that she has. Very durable and very high spike damage. See what happens. But yeah, we see MKH on Nunu, Sauron on Jarvan, as I predicted. See how see what how this plays out. Blood boiling either Sauron or Saber Z would be incredibly now, powerful. Magic Belt Oh. The one flaw with the Blood Boil Vein in this team comp against this team comp though is Tino's blind will will stop true silver bolts and damage being applied and will cut down that carry damage quite significantly. So it's just a case of getting in feed on you know, in range to get the blind safely. We actually see, we, have... we see Competarius on Rise and not Buddha Rice. Uh, Buddha Rice on Pantheon instead of Competarius. It's be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, Confiterius, well known for his assassin play, going to play a tanky AP champion now. See how well this goes. Um, Painkiller, of course, on Malphi, Captain Booberry on Kale, and Feed on Teemo. Some very standard picks there. Uh, I haven't seen NMKs play Nunu in a while. I think they probably picked him up to deny Infeed. Indeed, the Nunu Vane is a very, very strong combo regardless of the team, eh? That's very, very true. But it is attack speed based, and Malphite is very capable with Frozen Heart or Randuin's, and it's ground slam of cutting Vane's attack, attack speed down very drastically. Although a Nunu Vane can avoid a lot of abuse courtesy of the Blood Boil. It does mean Vane can get out of a lot more trouble. The extra mobility does, in effect, grant extra ability. Indeed. positioning. We'll see if Saber Z can replicate Booterice's vein from last game. Um, he does have a lot of meat, just as Booterice did last game with Magic Melkorn Poppy, Sauron on Jarvan, and MKH on Nunu. Also, didn't think about Damascian Standard from Jarvan will increase Saber Z's attack speed as well as increase his armor. So that'll also beef up. That's a lot of attack speed increase from. Um, team point defense. And with CDR count, MMKH can get Blood Boil up on two targets at one period of time for a short period of time. He can keep two people attacking quite quite fast at an early point in a team fight, which can lead to some devastating results, for example, on Jaff with additional attack speed and Z with additional attack speed. So it will be a case of who can feed blind and how quickly can he blind them. I guess they may be relying on Kale taking out the Z for the majority of the damage, and Mushroom is taking out the Vein before it gets to the top five. So Sweeper will be key here. I'd assume it'll be MMKH picking up a Sweeper top lane, just to counter the shrews and prevent any accidental deaths on escape or en route to the top fights. Timo is incredibly strong with his map. Just with the lack of wards on Dominion, there's a lot of jungle with no vision, and Mushrooms most certainly do how that. Let's see how this plays out. Infeed will provide a lot of uh, map coverage. See if they can use that to their advantage. Um, Pex is not as tanky as it was last game. You have a lot of squishies between Pantheon, Kale, and Teemo, while. Mm. Um, point defense with a bit more of the tanky route with Jar uh, Jarvan, Poppy, and Nunu. 
Of Although Kale Alt does grant a moment of invincibility, which does kind of in effect make things that little bit tackier for a moment of time. Even a vein, if it gets targeted by Malfoy and Timo at the same time, can stay in the fight for the extra few seconds with a Kale Ultimate. Hopefully enough time to get a few stacks of Drew Silver bots off, plenty of damage before going down. We see the loading screen here is pretty even on the skins. We see Victorious Jarvan, supported by Sauron. Heartseeker Veins supported by Saber Z, Scarlet H Hammer by uh, Poppy by Magic Melkor, and Nunu Bot by MMKH, and then Super the way, huh? Your summoner icon overlays are still on on the stream. Ah. Okay, just get them sorted. All right, that should disappear in a moment here. Uh, we yeah, have Super fine. Timo yeah. on Infeed, Judgment Kale on with. Captain Booberry, Painkiller on Marble Malphite, and Pump Terrors on Triumphant Rise. So let's see how this pans out for them. Ha, 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 ha,
Looks Power like MK using his usual flowchart to go mid. Fortunately, Enfield is there just... Oh, not in time! Gets to neutralize. Oh, 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 oh. Didn't quite think to stop him. Oh. Poor guy. Poor team, eh? Pan and Cage is trying to go to the end. Pan all there. A little bit of damage to Painkiller, but he doesn't have any real AP. 18 AP means his ultimate only does around 700 damage in an AoE. Slowing everyone for its duration, you know. Just a little, just a little bit of damage there. Uh, showing you the KDA, my apologies to the stream viewers, I keep forgetting to do that. You can see point events trying to just farm up a bit and push the wave. Probably going to traverse the jungle afterwards. Captain Blueberry picking up the health shrine. A little bit of lull in damage. Captain Blueberry heading bottom to try and kill Diana here. See what happens. He engaged by Diana on the top of Terrace. Diana going down almost immediately. Now Ron managed to pick up on Ferris. He does. He doesn't land his EQ combo, but the E lands on Ferris' head and the Q lands on it as well. Um, just doesn't quite drag Sauron over. Peter Rice is clearing the wave with his A. It looks like Sauron is trying to bait out Buddha Rice there. The bug with <laughs> Captain <laughs> with Magic Melkor pushes. Uh, Buddharize back as well as stun. Buddharize, no match for two people at the same time. Looks like Tex is though pushing oh, forward. Hard to so. uh, MK's about to go down. Saber Z blinded, can't do anything. Push condemns Painkiller back. That's going to be quest point neutralized. MK's going to try and stall this out. Not much he can do. M Mel Magic Melkor there as well. He does, does not get the wall stun. Oh, Use his ultimate. Harass from Team there, and additional damage. Sauron is in, knocking up Captain Goobery. Snowball does go off from MMKH, meaning they, they can't come in and get the damage off. Maybe calling it Z now. Oh, spent too much time with Americans. Zed, damn it, Zed. <laughs> Zed is dead. <laughs> it loses power, it sounds when you start like that, doesn't it? It doesn't quite sound right, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> no, not at all. It uh, looks like Point of is going to try and push for this. Uh, Painkiller getting condemned to the wall. Saber Z going down to Buddha Rice's Heartseeker Strike. Heartseeker Bane getting hit really hard by the Heartseeker Strike. Painkiller getting dunked, as well as Saber Z going down. Ultimate on Buddha Rice there by Kale. And Gage. Necrosin and Magic Magic Malfoy have managed to neutralize bot lane and done. But like with the creep wave, they may manage to cap it, except for Painkiller is now on his way to come to support. Prevented the full caps and kept it a neutral one. Next one is Rafa Lohal, but Infeed is taken from full to zero in a very short period of time by a Poppy Diana burst combo. And the wall stun able to kill him, although Infeed reviving and Painkiller picking up the kill there. Infeed with the revive buff, incredibly fast there. Well, he's just been fast for a good stance of Spamla. I'm going to be honest. He may have actually closed the gap there, but he had to stop for a team they last. <laughs> just to keep the viewers entertained and Necrogen going insane. Um, Alright, so he's pressuring on the turret whilst if he's trying to cap. The Necrogen does manage to land the cube, prevents the cap for two more seconds. Computaris does land his bind, but Necrogen is delaying, does get the slower, found a bit of extra press on MP3, so he's now very low, not enough to stay. Magic Malcord does knock Computaris into turret range, and Sauron does get his slow, he's in range, pick Computaris on the turret. Uh, Teemo backing off here, planting some shrooms here and there, gonna provide some slowing down of Magic Malcord there. <coughs> uh, unfortunately, this is the one on the health relic, they'll probably play a, a little bit later against Necrogen. Necrogen oh, engaging on to Infeed as well as Sauron! Infeed going down almost immediately! Just gets a great wave. It misses Necrogen and Sauron with extreme damage. Necrogen is aggressive on Boob. Look at the blade of He does manage to stop Sauron. Gets his ultimate after prevent further damage, but he is going to be taken out by Diana and Sauron. Taras is back to defend his point now, but it is still two people against one. Sauron to tall half, Necrogen if he picks up the half relic, it be quite high half as well, but Boober and Infeed will be back last in five seconds. They may like have to hop any further aggression on the turret. Top lane, point defense is pushing against both uh, Painkiller and Buddharize. Buddharize going down to Saber Z there, Painkiller being chased off by Magic Melkor, and then bot lane, Tom there going down to both Sauron and Necrogen. Captain Blueberry trying to do something about this pop-up going on by Sauron. Infi trying to blind anybody. Blinds Necrogen. Gonna try and take down Necrogen as much as possible. Necrogen running away. Infi laughing as he does. Sauron oh, hanging around. There's a sweeper active. 
I hope Necrogen did run into the house full extreme on his escape, but with his shield, we'll have more than enough help to get out of there. Sauron asking them to stop as he runs away. It looks like Magic Melkor is going to try oh, to get in. Wow, that burst from Magic Melkor. Been a while since I've seen a puppy stun. Now I'm going to be on it. Poor puppy's missing the walls with the, the shots. But will Veylander condemn? No, she is stuck in the Comstarius. Painkiller and in the that does manage to escape into Necrogen is there to cover a flank now. Although Zabers here, Necrogen do look set to be aggressive to on the turret. It does fall out back to lane for an extra turret shot, although Captain Boo can read now they have some additional harass as well. The objective did go in point defense's favour, but actually they do have an additional 10% damage, which has just ended. It's like Necrogen and Saber Z trying to stall for as long as possible there. Uh, Magic Melkor trying to, to, to try and back them up. The ult onto Confiterius by Kale. They managed to capture the Boneyard, taking down Vayne. Sauron trying to do something on uh, ooh, the ultimate by Painkiller there. A heal from Kale did keep Zemo alive there. Very, very no help, but he and eventually gets from the Snowball. Troll Nunu shoots the places. Kale like disappearing to the crushing blow of Poppy there. Necrogen trying to make something happen. Poppy going down but taking out Malphite before that. Comfortary is about to go down to Necrogen. Let's see if Necrogen can finish. The passive from Diana taking him down. Looks like Pantheon is going to jump in here. Necrogen does have shield up. He is taken out in a very swift fashion by Dude Rise afterwards. Sounds worth covering. Carry on pushing the lane. Try to neutralize it again in their favor. And Vayne is on the way back down to keep it covered out of the push. Sauron is eating a full heart seat just right there, which does drop a considerable amount of health there. But, uh, Magic Master on Poppy is also on his way back to get the additional harass up. Dave is saying, you don't, you, you don't want to do the, you don't want to do the face checking here. Will we see a mushroom bait? No, they walk outside of the bush. Magic Master does step in the stream, but the damage doesn't apply to the bait there. You notice how they chained the stuns there. They waited for the Condemn, followed by the Poppy Slam. In the case, trying to hold off this top point from three Pex players. Not going to be able to do much. Uh, Nunu, not known for holding off against that much. Uh, looks like Necrogen and Magic Melkor is noticing that there's so many Pex players top. They're going to try and take this from Competarius here. Magic Melkor does push him out of range, but right does manage to land Essence Slug there. Prevent the cast from Necrogen, but Sauron is his way to support does get the slow from Comfort Terrace, but the blind is preventing Necrogen from his tiny passive. And he is taking very low and his shield is not refreshing if he's not in also range, so Timo's toxic shot pick up the kill there. Although they did manage to neutralize Box Turret between Sauron and Necrogen and Magic Malcor. Magic Malcor did escape on very, very, very low health there. Uh, looks like Kale and Painkiller are trying to pressure mid, but uh, MK8 and Saber Z of Bane pushing back just as hard. They're going to push the lane, see what's going to occur. Teemo picking up the Storm Relic. Going to be some really nasty shrooms and blinding darts there. We do have more people up there. Oh no, Teemo's not quite at the top lane. He ran the other route. Imagine Malfour's MZ and MMKH are. Equally matched, there's numbers on the top quite at the minute. Sauron will be slower to get to the top lane than Infeed will. Infeed is there and does manage to finish off Poppy. We have Sauron jumping in, managed to get the knock on Budarov and manages to win the lock in three in place. They did run into range of painkiller lad, meaning that uh, round stuff like does come off, reducing an attack damage significantly for an action to go, which minimizes true silver bolt stack. You can see Captain Booberry with his Nashers 2 with the low cooldown. Saber Z trying to do something, but the Captain Booberry all manages to pick off Bane with the last auto attack. Sauron trying to do something. Infeed doesn't want to mess with Infeed because of the blind. So backs off, goes around, about to go top. Nope, decides to try and harass Infeed. The blind goes off. Saber Z is there to back him up though with the blood boil. It's still cooldown, although it just came off cooldown in time to prevent fair for a harass. Magic Malcourt does bring into another stream in the jungle, providing sweep of vision to Teemo. And damage. Everyone loves damage. And the wise word of Sauron, rudest Teemo ever. Nobody likes being blinded. Nobody. Not nice. <laughs> Lee Sin likes it least of all. He's already blinded and now he can't auto attack. If you don't have one man in the game. Points of five trying to find a break in Peck's defense. Magic Melkor going for a gank fight gets an immediate phase proc. Both Necrogen and, Com and Magic Melkor engaging onto Comfortarius. Captain Boobray and Infeed down there to back him up. Uh, 
good. Small stun there, but I imagine now Kronik does get the ultimate on top, uh, on Teemo, but... Okay, it'll delay the kill a little bit further. Necro is pulling Tumpter Terrier back in range. Like, Magic Mouth all runs back into an extra on our way back, and Necrogen is taken out by the combined damage of Ryzen. Captain Beaver and Magic Mouth was still under sweep vision from Teemo's stream there, meaning that his recall wasn't safe, didn't know what was happening, and they could get a little bit of harass off to stop the recall. Looks like now. they're going to press this advantage with Magic Melkor so low with Saber Z alone. Saber Z cloaking past Confiteria, being stunned by Buddha Rice there. Sauron trying to make the best of what he can. Offensive Garrison going down. This tower's not going to even get to help him there. Runs away. Garrison's defensively, but runs away. Looks like Magic Melkor is there to stop. Confiteria to get a double up on it. Get Confiteria alone inside the ultimate. Sauron is very low hand. But, oh, the Ignite just takes him out. Magic Melkor does continue getting additional harass on this right. He's taken out by Impede on Teemo, but next is continuing the harass. And Impede is taken out by a double ultimate combo there. Just because the ultimates are refreshed, if you've got your Q up, doesn't mean you have to have your Q up to use it. A double ultimate after you've had your Q can lead to quite a bit of an additional burst if you are Diana. She does alter a creep to get out of the way of Buddha Rice's film there. Although he does have revive for a short speed boost. Looks like Buddha Rice trying to take out Necrogen there, but Necrogen backing off with the slow. <clears throat> MKH and Saber Z trying to do something. Blood Boil and, and Saber Z pushing towards Malphite. Malphite not known for his clearing ability. See the silver bolts ripping through Malphite. The ultimate for Malphite catching Saber Z. The ultimate from Kale there, preventing a third of harass from two silver bolts ready for now. That's meaning Kale itself is taken out in very swift fashion. Teemo is there to try and pick the thing. Does get the blinding shot off and the top hit shot does have enough damage to finish off the main there. Sauron is on his way back to swap the turret tank to Magic Mouth Ball, but doesn't take turret damage. He currently has his ultimate on Big Rise. But he did manage to finish the job there. And okay, Patreon Sauron are very low half from Duke 3 on his way back to pick him up. If he does get a blind in shot off and he's spamming laugh, it's just that sort of guy. <laughs> and be known for spamming his laugh. Oh, Golden Age is just enough to save Sauron there. Looks like Point Defense will take their tower back top. Negrogen engaging on Confiteria's bot lane. Let's see if he can try and kill him. The passive doing a lot of damage. Void that from Negrogen paying off there. Confiteria's about to go down. The shield refreshes. And the ultimate from Nekrogen taking left. him down. Wilderice trying to reinforce that bot lane through Fog of War. Top lane, a lot of fighting going on. Saber Z tumbling right into Painkiller, gets blinded and ground slammed. Dies. Sauron. Take uh, on the game that is tumbled into ground slam there. There's massive reduced base damage out there. It's one of those sorts of people you don't want to be tumbling into his vein. He is also in Painkiller to try to make cap, but Painkiller's ultimate does get him just that range, and he is alone. Trying to defend the against Magic Melkor and Okay, so Sauron, but in feed on Teemo does arrive. Pick up her NKH. Drops a two, and drops a three. It's like Sauron takes out Malphite there. In feed, blinding Sauron. Sauron not being able to deal as much damage. And MKH with support, Nunu not being able to deal much damage to in feed there. Again, the blind on Sauron. Sauron dies to Teemo. But they managed to capture the quest point, 279 to 47. Pack still ahead by quite a bit. See if so, uh, the point defense can pull this around. We do see quite a late game team come from point defense, and it has led some suffering in early team fights. But with Poppy, Vane, and Nuno, it's a very strong late team fight, but that can be problematic. Indeed, we're, we're seeing a 1.9 attack speed on. Uh, Vane with the blood boils to see how powerful that is late game if he can be protected by Sauron and Nunu. About 0.5 seconds for every true silver cross stack, which currently does 8% of the target's max of true damage. So every 4.5 seconds, Vane is doing nearly 10% of the health and true damage. It's unnegatable. Sweeper was a part of Vane, meaning she wants to take it down on the turret, and it's taken out by Uber. He's good the right to just managing to play in health. As well, there. Garrison is part, but Captain the Ray Painter and Infeed are all alive. But can't fail after that. Necrogen has been abusing bot lane in this time. There, he's been destroying poor Comparis's rise and manages to neutralise. Not quite Cap because Infeed's on his way. Will he Cap? Cap quite Cap to the creep wave in on his way. So he's relying on the creep wave. Infeed is pushing the creep wave to prevent Cap. 
whilst Necrogen is it's been a lot of damage to Infinite Health, but the blind has got just prevent Oh, Necrogen walks into a stream and will be taken out in exchange. Wow, the One. Teemo dots are doing so much damage. Saw him trying to stop Comfortaris from recapping his bottom, but unfortunately Comfortaris has frozen the or Glacial Shroud, so it's too tanky for Sauron. Endgame Rise is incredibly scary. Yeah. 2.8k in health and over 100 of each resistance. Look how this is one of the other gems. Especially considering the damage as well. MK is getting a full channel off and then using his hourglass. Buddha Rice trying to defend us against both Poppy and Nunu there. See if Poppy can do anything. Blocks, not enough. Poppy taking down Buddha Rice's Pantheon there, managing to cap top four point defense. Computer is finally capping his bottom lane at, at the, um, the quarry there. I have been holding on on 47 points for a while now. It may be that the game could be kicking in for point defense here. Oh, uh, Captain Beaver is coming in with him, Thebes, first potentially against Anchor Load, Nexogen has backed out, most of the people are missing, and he's spamming Lass himself. I do like spamming Lass these folks. We do have Captain Beaver getting caught there by MKH, ABZ, and Saron, and now Magic Malcourt is there as well, so how many feed is running away? Ridiculously fast with Move Quick, such an original ability name there. <laughs> Uh, Secret Z was now with 2.0 attack speed, incredibly scary for Vayne. Um, looks like MK8 is incredibly tanky, trying to bait out both Infeed and uh, Buddha Rice for his teammates. See if Saber Z can do anything about this. Painkiller coming out, gets caught between Magic Mouthcore and Saber Z. Sauron ulting and helping both Pantheon and uh, uh, Nunu there. Nunu with a full channel ult blows up Pantheon. Magic Malkar going balls deep under mid tower. Ultimate ends though, getting ripped apart by both uh, Captain Blueberry and Infeed. Poor guy, just trying to chase the team, mate. It's just rude. Damn it, team, mate. Can't you be slower? I can die quicker. Looks like uh, Peck pays him on the time support. He's going to take this time to try and cap the top point. He's only saved the team. He's trying to do something about this. Gets a crit off, but he's just. Oh, oh wow, the condemn on top of the tumble manages to get a uh, proc. If people didn't know, then does proc one stack true double bolts. Can be used just to get that finish and true damage off of someone. But you can't get a stud or anything else from it. And then Cage not having much damage, does uh, manage to take care of be very weird for the tower on there. The birth damage from the poppy devastating blow and the MKH ultimate taking Buddharize so low, Buddharize refusing to die finally does. <coughs> Painkiller trying to keep Poppy away and MKH from the point. Mortal Sauron's there to back him up, reducing his armor with Dragon Strike. Pantheon getting extremely low, uh, Painkiller getting extremely low, finally goes down. Five point defense members, or four point defense members up the top, finally taking Windmill. People are going to recall as they're low on health. Infi picking up Storm. He's going to walk through three streams here. He is going to go through every stream. Infi is now here to pick up on the fight. Super is there as well. Necrogen oh, doesn't quite walk into the third stream. He is supported by LMK and Z, the but they do manage to pick up Necrogen with the following up blinding shot there. Infi does have invincibility cut in by Cat. He gets to take the initial harass. Papillon is jumping down everyone's head, but Infeed has been paid now, it's now JC, Magic Malkor, and Sauron again, Buderite on full health, but we can pick it. He was very, very capable of taking out Pantheon quite fast. Painkiller is there to defend point. Magic Malkor taking quite a bit of damage from Shrooms there, Painkiller had to slap him as well. That was quite the fight by point defense there, managing to push out of the Pantheon ultimate, and cleaning up the rest of them. Unfortunately, Pantheon got cancelled his ultimate in time and got picked off there. Saber Z trying to life steal his way back up top. Painkiller seeing if he can do anything. Thorn mail on Painkiller. Saber Z does not want to tangle with that quite yet. He hurt a little too much there. In speed, seeing what he can do, blinding MMK. It's slowed. See if he can get the standoff 4v4, 4v4 under tower. Incredibly scary. See what happens. Bringing it up just to get the line of defense ready in case point defense they want to get on the aggressive. Magic Malfour has run through a stream on his way to him feet and been exhausted. His ultimate ready for another stream and during his ultimate it looks like Magic Malfour will be taken out the MC. And Cage is also taken out in 
Swift fashion and leg zing. Sauron left at that only half hit points. He was pretty much ignored that entire fight. Three people he left. He is very deep, but uh, in Pete's line, he's just too strong. And his ultimate doesn't quite fit his camp animation, meaning Boudreau did stay alive. Magic Malcolm have came and picked him off, it looks like. Oh, so much death on Teemo there, and because Teemo didn't have blind up, Magic Malcolm did yeah, manage to blow actually goes through blind. It's incredibly oh. powerful. The stun onto Malphite, allowing Magic Malcor to pick it up with another devastating blow. Triple kill for Magic Malcor. Incredibly powerful. Diana went down to uh, Confiterius' rise. Impressive. Endgame rise is almost here. We need one more major item, and he's finally completed. So he's went from uh, losing the land for most of the game to now he's taking the lead. That's quite interesting to see. Well done by Confitarius on Rise in that case. We do have Sauron Captain on Shield buff and Xavier Z to run away from Boobery, who with the slow on his Q and the speed buff on his heel can deal with it quite well. Xavier Z is taken very low with the tumble, manages to avoid death that a little bit longer. But Sauron is now here to try and pick up Boobery, although he doesn't land the slow. And then KH does land the snowball, and the ult is down, and KO is taken out. Looks yeah. like their point is trying to protect this incredibly close game, 68 and counting to 47. If he gets engaged on by Sauron, MK Empire ult, full channel onto Painkiller, bursting him down to half health. Magic Melkar keeping Painkiller or Buddharice away from everybody. The ultimate, unable, uh, peck, unable to help Pantheon as he dies. Blueberry going down as well. Painkiller about to fall. Pause. Uh -huh. Pause, and just another interesting thing to notice, Magic Malcor did buy an Oracles and killed every Shroom on Ritz's top. As wow. for the last two or so fights, he's been under a lot of harass from Shrooms and a lot of overall damage. I've got to say, this is quite a heavy combat. Point Defense has been on 47 points now for, what was it, 230 points? Pex Ron before that? And then Point Defense managed to defend a point for over two minutes. Probably around three minutes. Very impressive to play by. Looks like Terrius's computer exploded. Let's see what oh. happens. Ah, uh, it's not good. Let's give him a minute. Hopefully they'll reconnect. There goes Terrius disconnecting from the match. You can see Painkiller about to go down here. Um, very question in chat. We're available for a moment until. Back. Still no resume yet. Yeah. Game is very, very close. Huge combat by point defense with at point defense with a late game oriented team fight. Copy Van Nune managing to clean up fights with an awful lot of damage. Teammates blind can't be applied to everyone sadly. And the Arctic and Kale's ultimate, so one target at a time can be shut but down incredibly hard. As yes, Teemo's blind is highly underappreciated. You can usually pick out somebody every couple of seconds. You can usually, for every 10 seconds, someone is out of a fight for about 6 seconds. So, I mean, it's incredibly powerful. Very, very strong indeed. Oh, and on my screen, Tankiller has 517 armor. Wow. Which, which is, it's W30 increases armor by 40% and his attack damage as well. That's still a very, very impressive amount of armor. 517% extra effective half against physical damage attacks. That would, that would explain why Poppy is able to rip through him so quickly. Very little MR against the amount of armor or magic pen that Poppy has. And you have to remember that Trinity Force changes the... Or Devastating Blow changes the Trinity Force's damage to magic when he uses it with Devastating Blow, which is incredibly powerful. Is it not bonus physical damage, actually, the passive on 24? It is, but oh. some champions actually convert it, such as Mordekaiser oh, and Q. Poppy. Yeah, Poppy's Q. That's very true. It applies beyond hit. That's very strong indeed. Very, very strong. And that's quite an interesting pop build. She's went for the Triforce, the additional auto attack damage and everything else, Phage, Slow, etc. But then just gone for Flat Pen, just a counter Malphite. Armor heavy build at the minute. 517 armor. That, that, that's insane. I see there are gold values here. No one is generally ahead in gold. Diana and uh, Rise are about on equal footing bottom lane at 16,000. Everyone else is hovering around 13, 12, and 14,000 there. 
the, the only lane that really tends to snowball ahead in gold can be bot lane, but that typically happens when you gank a lot or you're permanently killing the opposition. Everyone else typically ends up on a very similar amount of gold. See, Sauron sitting on 1800 there, as well as Nunu sitting on 1500. It'll be interesting what they purchase on the way back. Well, it's going to have to be pretty soon. They've got 12 seconds until Infeed on Teemo and 12 seconds until Buddha Rice on Pantheon do re uh, revive. 26 seconds until Boober is back. Painkiller is going to be quite, quite dead quite soon as well, as soon as the pause is resumed. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It uh, looks like KW's child support will have to regroup and try to make a big push. And if that push fails, then it's over. Yeah, that'll probably be game here, because it's one minute of cap time left with three caps and the game is over. Let's see what happens. 25, 25, nearly 26 minute game thus far. Quite recent length. We've had three very, very good games between Point Defense and Paver and Child Support thus far. Quite impressive. And as saw in chat says, indeed, Javan does have a percent armor shred on his spear, which is very, very useful against 517 armor Malphite. Although, even after the shred, what's he going to be on? Let's do a quick bit of maths here. Javan does. 26% armor shred to get rid of a quarter of 517 armor. Still leaving painkiller on about <laughs> on quite a hefty amount of armor, around 375 armor after the shred. We'll see. We're in pause, waiting for Tom Paris to jump back into the game. Oh, there he is. Apologies to disruption, yes, but it looks like we should be resuming shortly. Tom Paris is back now. Uh, and we'll resume happen pretty soon. So look, we've probably got about one and a half minutes before the game is over. It's looking very, very close. If, if Pex managed to cap, if not, then the game will be over in 57 seconds. And just to recap, Painkiller is looking set to die very quickly. Captain Boobery died very recently. Infeed and Boobery as well have to the fight to fall. Immediate recalls by Magic Melkor, but Sauron decides not to. There is... He's, he's got quite a bit. I was reaping on the speed shrine, so he can come back with the speed boost. That's a clever little tactic to you want, if you're curious what to do. Although he didn't shot that quick, so he doesn't get much of the speed shrine left on leaving the base. See so what happens. Competarius, ooh, being spotted by Saber Z there. And KH also being spotted out by his Teagle Shroom. Getting picked off, that's a lot of damage there. Pantheon canceling the ultimate there. Oh. Looks like there's a lane swap. They want to bring Compitary to full build rise. Infi getting picked off by Magic Melkor. MKH trying to empire all those ults going up. They Vayne getting, getting melted. melted they? And this far, they go pay Devlin's chance for Saber. Compitaris with his sped rise. Very tanky, lots of AoE damage, lots of and as well, it grants him 25% spell power and 50% AoE damage. And Cage is there to try and help, but Zonya's to get out of the damage. It looks like it will fall very, very quickly afterwards. It doesn't manage to delay the cat. Boot the Rice, Confitaris, Ah, Recall, but it is the jungle, and it looks like 40 seconds in this game could be over. We've got one more push left to see if it happens. Looks like Magic this Milkar is going to try and gank bottom. No one from Pex is responding at Sauron up there as well. They're going to try and... Feed is on way and to spot Sauron, however, so they do know a game is coming. Confitaris is setting around speed trying. Pantheon is mobilising the fourth bottle of the team Confitaris is on his way bot now as well. As he's there. And Goodrush is jumping the bottom. Pantheon now. Two, two, he did go very low and was taken out instantly. It's now 3v3 on the turret. The plane is coming in with a lot of additional damage. I'm true damage on the road. Confitaris is taken out here instantly. But as soon as Puppy, oh, and she's dead as well, Infi's taken out by Bane as a true, as she wasn't blinded, she lost a true damage enough damage, Computaris did have cover, so it does look like this made a game. That was very unfortunate for point defense, uh, looks like MMK8 is trying to back tap Painkiller, trying to stall for as long as possible, Necrogen with the revive, trying to do something with it, Saber Z pushing, this is going to be pushed for not unless they do something, 10 points remaining, 
Now he's okay, trying to push as hard as he can to get neutralised on the point down. He is right click. Garrison did go for painkiller. So this will be game over. There's not enough time. GG's yeah. coming out. It looks like victory for Hayes other than child support. Three incredibly close games there. Very good cast, very good cast indeed. That is two victories, Faith Evelyn Child Support, and they have won this week the Mega Dominion tournament with a two to one in the finals. Anything else to say? It looks like very close games by all the teams that we just witnessed. Twenty five to zero. None of them were above a hundred, I believe. Pretty crazy. These guys proving oh, why they're the top teams on the NA circuit. I think the second game might have been slightly above 100, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. The first game was 40 points victory to pay Evelyn Child Support. I think the second game might have been just over 100 point victory. Or was it? I can't remember who won which game. I'm sure the second game might have been slightly over 100, but they were all very, very close games. The last team fight there did decide that game for the last two team fights. And Timo definitely held his weight, blind in vain, and Vane was taken out instantly from the burst. Confitari is swapping top on a full build of rise, was able to devastate a team with lots of very damage. Quite a bit of spell vamp and sustain, and very tanky, very difficult character to deal with in that game. And just impressive play. Very impressive through. play by these teams. Thank you for tuning in to Dominate Dominion week number 28. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, as well as Battle Clan on Twitter, I believe. Um, that, yeah, Battle Clan Master Waganda uploads his odds, isn't it? And for anyone interested in 12 hours time, I think it's 12 hours time, there is a Dominion tournament on the West, which I should shout out to that is the 4th hour tournament. I'll be doing that on my own stream, so Twitch TV slash Recycled Goods. And I hope everyone had a good night. Well, thanks for watching. Tune in next week. Remember that we also have Captain Booberry tomorrow on stream, followed by Oni Snake on Monday, Necrogen on Tuesday, and myself on Wednesday night. So if you like Dominion, tune in and subscribe to our channel. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for watching.